SpaceX's Block 4 just revealed five absolutely insane upgrades that shocked the entire space industry. We're talking 81 meter height, 9,240 tons of thrust, and a fuel transfer tube as massive as Falcon 9. But those are just the obvious ones. The hidden upgrades are even crazier, including a complete engine redesign and something nobody saw coming. Which upgrade is the most mind-blowing? Let's dive right in. Here's the thing nobody expected. When SpaceX first announced Block 4, most experts thought they'd just tweak a few components. Instead, Elon Musk dropped a bombshell that sent shockwaves through the entire aerospace industry. Block 4 isn't just taller, it's a complete transformation. We're talking about growing from 71 meters to 81 meters. That's like taking a 20-story building and adding three more floors on top. But here's where it gets insane. Those extra 10 meters aren't just for show. The math is mind-bending. Current Block 2 holds 3,400 tons of propellant. Imagine 2,267 cars worth of fuel stuffed into one rocket. Block 4? It packs 4,148 tons. That's a 22% increase in fuel capacity, which translates to something revolutionary. By the time any rocket reaches stage separation at 90 kilometers up, it's running on fumes. Just 10 to 15% fuel left. It's like driving cross country with your gas light already on. But Block 4's massive fuel increase means the booster can actually fly back home and land safely instead of becoming expensive ocean fireworks. But why did this size increase shock everyone so much? The answer lies in what SpaceX was secretly planning. Remember when NASA's space shuttle was the pinnacle of human engineering? Five engines producing 3,118 tons of thrust, capable of carrying International Space Station components to orbit. That was the absolute limit of what seemed possible. SpaceX looked at that record and completely obliterated it. Block 4 uses 33 Raptor 3 engines, each pumping out 280 tons of thrust. The total? 9,240 tons of liftoff power. We're talking about nearly three times more powerful than the legendary space shuttle that built the ISS. But here's the twist that left aerospace engineers scratching their heads. Raptor 3 actually burns more fuel, 801.51 kilograms per second, compared to Raptor 2's 663.88 kilograms per second. Most people would think that's terrible efficiency, right? Dead wrong. Despite burning 21.7% more fuel, Raptor 3 is actually 1% more efficient per kilon of thrust produced. How is that even possible? SpaceX completely redesigned the engine from the ground up, removing fragile components and cutting auxiliary mass by 87%. The visual transformation is shocking. Raptor 1 looked like a flying spaghetti monster, a bird's nest of cables and protective systems. Raptor 3? It's so sleek that Tori Bruno, CEO of United Launch Alliance, thought SpaceX was trying to fool everyone with fake pictures. But the most shocking revelation came when SpaceX revealed what this engine upgrade actually enables. Two weeks ago, SpaceX casually mentioned something that made rocket engineers around the world stop dead in their tracks. Buried in a technical update was a detail most people missed, a giant transfer tube nearly the size of an entire Falcon 9 booster stage. This isn't just plumbing. This tube solves a problem that's been killing rockets for decades. Here's the deadly scenario. When a rocket flips during landing, fuel sloshes around like water in a bottle you're shaking violently. At the worst possible moment, during engine restart for landing, the fuel gets cut off from the engines. That's exactly what killed Booster 14 during Flight 9. The rocket attempted a steep landing approach. The fuel flow got disrupted and boom, rapid unscheduled disassembly. SpaceX's solution? This massive transfer tube channels subcooled methane directly from the main tank to all 33 engines, maintaining fuel flow even when the rocket is doing acrobatics in the sky. But here's what's truly insane. This tube enables simultaneous engine starts, faster flip maneuvers, and something SpaceX hasn't publicly announced yet. The ability to land on drone ships in the middle of the ocean. Why would they need ocean landings when they have the perfectly good Mechazilla Tower? The answer will shock you. Remember the hot staging ring from earlier flights? 
that massive metal component that helps separate the booster from the upper stage? SpaceX literally had to throw it away after every flight, hiring ships to fish these million-dollar pieces out of the ocean. Block 4 just made that entire problem vanish. Instead of a detachable ring that gets discarded, the new design is fully integrated into the booster itself. No more ocean fishing expeditions, no more wasted hardware, no more assembly nightmares. But the engineering behind this is revolutionary. The integrated system provides dramatically more room for exhaust gases to escape, manages heat and pressure better, and offers superior protection to critical components like the grid fins. You can actually see the Raptor 3 engines clearly through this redesigned structure. This isn't just about saving money, though it saves millions per flight. It's about making rocket reuse so smooth that SpaceX can achieve their ultimate goal. Launching rockets like airlines to schedule flights. But the fifth upgrade is where things get really weird. This is where SpaceX completely shattered conventional aerospace wisdom. For decades, everyone knew you needed four grid fins for proper aerodynamic control. Basic symmetry, right? Four fins, evenly spaced, perfectly balanced. SpaceX looked at 60 years of rocket science and said, we're doing it differently. Block 4 uses just three grid fins, arranged in a completely asymmetrical 90 to 180 degree layout. When aerospace engineers first saw this design, many thought it was a mistake. How can you control a 5,000 ton rocket with uneven fins? Here's the mind-bending truth. Breaking symmetry actually improves control. The asymmetrical setup creates intentional mass imbalance that enhances flip maneuvers and controlled braking during descent. Plus, fewer fins means less mass. And when you're building hundreds of rockets per year, saving one fin per vehicle creates massive production gains. The repositioning is equally genius. Moving the fins 80 centimeters lower places them in more stable airflow during the subsonic landing phase, giving the flight computer better control when every millisecond counts. But there's a hidden agenda behind all these upgrades. Here's what SpaceX isn't telling you directly. All these upgrades aren't just about making rockets more powerful. They're preparing for something that could revolutionize space access forever. SpaceX is secretly developing drone ship landings for super heavy boosters. Right now, if Mechazilla can't catch the booster, it crashes into the sea. Game over. Hundreds of millions of dollars lost. Flight 9 was actually a covert test of this concept. SpaceX deliberately programmed Booster 14 to attempt a steep angle landing approach, exactly what you'd need to land on a floating platform. The test failed spectacularly, but the data was invaluable. The fuel flow disruption that killed Booster 14 is precisely why SpaceX designed that massive transfer tube for Block 4. Every upgrade serves a secret mission. There's another layer most people miss. SpaceX faces serious legal pressure over environmental impact at Starbase. Environmental groups sued the FAA in May 2023, claiming Starship launches harm protected wildlife like migratory birds, sea turtles, and ocelots. Ocean landings solve this problem elegantly. No noise pollution over protected habitats, no risk to wildlife, no legal headaches, it's why 88% of Falcon 9 landings already happen on drone ships. But landing a super heavy booster on a drone ship is like trying to land a 20-story building on a floating parking lot during a hurricane. The booster weighs nearly 200 tons and approaches at 100 meters per second. SpaceX actually tried this before. In 2020, they bought two massive oil rigs, Phobos and Deimos, named after Mars's moons, planning to convert them into floating starship platforms. Each rig measured 78 by 73 meters with four corner columns 15 meters tall. The project was scrapped in 2022. The rigs were sold. SpaceX COO Gwyn Shotwell admitted they just weren't the right platform. But now with Block 4's revolutionary upgrades, maybe the technology has finally caught up to the vision. Here's the final piece that ties everything together. SpaceX isn't just building Earth rockets. They're developing a Mars transportation system, and Mars doesn't have a Mechazilla tower waiting. Every Starship landing on Mars will need to use its own engines and systems, just like the drone ship concept. By perfecting ocean landings now, SpaceX is actually practicing for Mars missions. The steep angle approach, precise fuel management, engine out scenarios. 
These aren't just Earth problems. They're Mars problems. Solve them in Earth's oceans. Solve them on the red planet. Elon Musk claims the first Block 4 could debut as early as next year. Most aerospace experts call this timeline impossible. Traditional rocket development takes 5 to 10 years. SpaceX is talking about 12 months. But they've already started. Booster B-18, the first Block 3 prototype, is under assembly right now. Flight 12 in September or October will likely showcase these technologies. Block 3 and Block 4 share the same basic design philosophy. Once Block 3 proves the concepts work, scaling up to Block 4 becomes feasible. While SpaceX plans these revolutionary upgrades, what's the competition doing? NASA's SLS costs $4.1 billion per launch and can't be reused. Blue Origin's new Glenn still hasn't flown. China and Russia are using decades-old technology. SpaceX isn't just ahead, they're lapping the entire industry. Block 4 represents a quantum leap that could make every other heavy-lift rocket obsolete overnight. If SpaceX achieves their cost targets of $15 per kilogram to orbit, they could launch entire space stations for the price of a single SLS mission. They could send massive cargo loads to Mars for less than it currently costs to reach low Earth orbit. But here's what's truly shocking about these five upgrades. They're not the end goal. They're stepping stones to something even more revolutionary. Elon Musk recently hinted that after Block 4 reaches certain height limits, SpaceX will likely increase Starship's diameter. We're talking about a potential return to the original 12-meter design. 42 engines producing 11,760 tons of thrust. That's over three times the power of the Saturn V that took humans to the moon. Block 4's upgrades are preparing the technology foundation for this ultimate vision. The integrated systems, advanced engines, ocean landing capability, and revolutionary manufacturing. Everything serves the larger goal of making humanity a multiplanetary species. But will these insane upgrades actually work? Or is SpaceX promising more than physics allows? So there you have it. Five absolutely insane upgrades that prove SpaceX isn't just building rockets. They're rewriting the laws of what's possible. The 81 meter height, 9,240 tons of thrust, that mysterious transfer tube, integrated systems, and those mind-bending three fins. Each one represents a quantum leap that traditional aerospace said couldn't be done. But here's what keeps me up at night. If these impossible upgrades actually work, we're not just witnessing rocket evolution. We're watching the birth of true space civilization. Every upgrade serves the ultimate goal. Making Mars accessible, making space affordable, making humanity unstoppable. When Block 4 takes flight, it won't just be launching cargo, it'll be launching our future. What do you think? Will SpaceX pull off these revolutionary changes, or are they reaching too far beyond physics? Drop your thoughts below. I read every single comment, and if you're as obsessed with the future of space as I am, you definitely want to see what's coming next. The Block 4 story is just beginning. Until next time, keep looking up. SpaceX engineers are in complete shock. The heat shield crisis is destroying everything. 18,500 tiles failing every flight. $1 million burned per mission. Mars dreams dying, but Elon's desperate steel gamble could save it all or kill the program forever. Will this insane bet work? Let's dive right in. Picture this. You're an engineer at SpaceX, staring at footage from Starship Flight 4. The ship is returning from space when suddenly, fireworks, not the celebration kind, the our multi-billion dollar heat shield is literally disintegrating kind. Chunks of ceramic tiles are ripping away from the ship. Superheated plasma is eating through the hull like acid. The flap hinge area becomes a light show that would make the 4th of July jealous. This wasn't supposed to happen. Not like this. Every engineer in that room knew they were watching the moment that could kill Mars' dreams forever. Because here's the brutal truth nobody talks about. If you can't solve re-entry, you can't reuse rockets. And if you can't reuse rockets, Mars is just an expensive fantasy. But there's something even more terrifying about this footage. 
For months, SpaceX had been telling everyone that ceramic tiles were the solution. After all, they worked perfectly on Dragon capsules. Government officials were convinced. Investors were satisfied. Even NASA was impressed. But Dragon is the size of a small car. Starship is a 20-story skyscraper. The physics don't just change. They become your worst nightmare. When Dragon re-enters Earth's atmosphere, it's dealing with about 70 square meters of surface area. Manageable. Predictable. When Starship re-enters, we're talking about over 1,000 square meters of pure hell. That's not a 14 times increase in complexity. It's exponential chaos. Every single tile becomes a potential failure point. Every gap between tiles becomes a plasma pathway. Every vibration during launch creates microscopic cracks that turn into catastrophic failures during re-entry. SpaceX engineers discovered something that kept them awake at night. Scaling up heat shield technology isn't like scaling up a recipe. It's like trying to turn a campfire into a controlled nuclear reaction. But the real kicker? They didn't know how bad it was until they saw the footage. Here's the number that made SpaceX executives consider early retirement. $1 million per flight for heat shield maintenance. Think that's expensive? It gets worse. SpaceX wants to fly Starship weekly. That's $52 million per year. For one ship, they're planning dozens of ships in their fleet. Do the math. We're looking at over $1 billion annually just to keep ceramic tiles working. That's more than the entire budget of some space agencies. But money isn't even the worst part. Each inspection takes three weeks. Three weeks of engineers crawling over every square inch of the ship with magnifying glasses, looking for cracks, chips, and missing tiles. Three weeks of delays while other ships wait in line. SpaceX's dream of rapid reusability was turning into a ceramic tile replacement service. And then engineers discovered the hidden killer. Nobody expected this. The heat during re-entry? Sure, that's obvious. But the thing that's actually destroying ceramic tiles happens before the ship even reaches space. Launch vibration? When 33 Raptor engines fire simultaneously, they create seismic level vibrations. The entire ship shakes like it's in an earthquake. Those delicate ceramic tiles held by tiny metal pins start developing hairline fractures before they even face their first bit of heat. It's like sending a porcelain vase through a paint mixer and then expecting it to survive a blowtorch.